And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who loves food on a marine base. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And boy, oh boy, is it ever beautiful today on Milleronia. I know, and I know, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, that yes, I control the weather, yes, I choose the weather, and yes, the weather does what I say it should do, but it doesn't mean you should never say, wow, it's gorgeous today. Thanks, weather. So you know what? It is. It really is, and uh, nothing makes it more beautiful, of course, as always, then that music really sets me and Colonel Jeff up for a great show. And of course, that's the Henry Fonda Orchestra and the Eileen Kahn Dancers featuring boy tenor Mike Lucking asking the musical question, Growing up, we had one TV in the house, a black and white Dumont in the basement with rabbit ears. It may not sound like much, but isn't that how we all learned to fight and win? Yes, Mike. Yes, it is. That's exactly correct. And uh, Colonel Jeff and I don't know how many siblings you have, but I'll bet you all liked different shows, and I'll bet no one gave up easily. And I'll bet, yes, you learned how to fight and win just fine. And, in fact, it reminded me that uh, our family had one TV in the house, too, when I was growing up, a black-and-white admiral, and that had rabbit ears, too. We uh we didn't fight, though. I don't remember fighting because I think we all, including my parents, we all just loved the thing and couldn't believe we were lucky enough to have even that. Now, that may sound goofy, but it's true. We said, look, like, hey, we're going to watch TV tonight. Well, it was a <laughs> and it was a black metal case or tin, whatever they made them out of. And we had, yeah, it was only about nine, ten inches wide and... uh But we loved it. We thought it was great. And we, you could say, I suppose we didn't know any better, but, well, we thought we knew just fine. And we, we loved it and never, never threw that thing out either. That's kind of interesting. I mean, we, we kept it in our guest room, which wasn't that fancy either. I mean, that, that old Admiral never broke either. It never broke. It just kept running and running and sat on top of an old dresser. We didn't throw out either, and boy, it was it was just fine there too. I don't, I don't know how we could have liked it more. My uncle Joe and Aunt Arlene had a color TV in their apartment in Manhattan, and uh, that was a. Uh, well, it was like going over there for Sunday get-togethers with the family. Th- that those were the days also when uh, I don't know about you guys, but. We always had Sunday get-togethers with the family. All holidays were at our house on Long Island, and everybody was over there. That was, you know, 20, 25 people, all relatives. And uh, Uncle Joe and Aunt Arlene, though, had an apartment on uh, the lower lower west side of Manhattan. And uh, there's two bedrooms, and, well, I liked them a lot. And they, had, oh, they always had Sunday afternoon slash early evening get-togethers of events for the family again and the food was always good it was from a deli so it was always going to be platters of good food i don't know about you but that's good food to me and uh, big platters of pickles one time i ate a whole platter of pickles and uh, which caused my mother to turn to aunt etty and uh, say to her you had to watch him eat that whole tray before you told me, but uh, that was great. And Uncle Joe and Aunt Arlene had a color TV that was remote controlled. This was really futuristic for us. This was really wild. And uh, and when I say remote control, I mean the old kind that that clicked when you pushed down on one of the click buttons. That's how you change things. 
And I mean, it clicked like a rifle shot. You could hear it everywhere in that apartment building. Click. And uh, we saw color. We used to watch football games when we went over there on a Sunday. So it was my uh, my dad and Uncle Joe and Uncle Dickie and, well, let's see, and Uncle Dave and uh, obviously it sounded, and me and it sounded like all, and my cousin Craig. It sounded like all men because, well, frankly, who else wants to watch a football game with a giant corned beef sandwich? Well, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Plenty of women like that today too, but the uh, all my aunts and my mom and in those days just liked uh, standing off on the side and yakking and setting up uh, whatever they were going to set up on the table there. But boy, we thought that was something—a color TV. And it wasn't that kid. In those days, it was—I guess this was sixty-two, sixty-four, something like that. So it wasn't that the TV itself wasn't that great, but we didn't care. We didn't know anything. And so it was color, but I think it was color like in a 19th century way. So there was like a, a green a green unit and a red unit and a blue unit, and you saw them all. And that was uh, well, pretty good. I don't know if people would consider it fancy today, but we thought it was great. And how about watching the game? Yeah, everyone wanted to see the game. But you know what, folks? Eventually at home, we got... Uh, Remember I told you we never threw that admiral out. And uh, eventually we got an even older big brown black and white TV. It's amazing that it was even older, but that was like from, well, a Raymond Chandler book, you know, and uh, that was like from the 40s. And uh, we got that from my Uncle Harry. But both of those things were great to watch Gunsmoke and the Walt Disney Show. I can tell you that for sure. Well, they weren't in color, and they weren't very big, but we sure liked them. And, uh, Mike, I'll bet you liked yours, too. And, uh, gee, it's a good memory to have. I hope you folks have one of those, too. And by PayPal. That's right, PayPal, one of the greatest groups. Boy, folks, you know, whenever you work with PayPal, you save like you, you feel like you're saving the world. And who knows, maybe you are. And uh, what you want to do with PayPal is get there, and I can, help, I can help you out with that. You could go there anywhere. You could go on your computer or on your iPhone, on anything that sw- swings open like a laptop, but it, it doesn't matter. Let us take you there. That's the best way to go. What you do is you go to our website, LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a traffic cop on Mars. <laughs> that little whistle. Of, and I love it, though, for that reason. Who doesn't like traffic cops on Mars? And at any rate, though, you know what? You go to ours, and we have a banner that says PayPal. You click that banner, and we'll get you there. Go to our website, LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain, Tom Mix? Oh, excuse Sorry, I should have had the fish. You know, it's... G- Colonel Jeff is always at the ready with the right buttons <laughs> and the right fingers. And uh, so go to PayPal anytime you want. And that brings me that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke of the week. This is a good one, too. As you know, I always invite you, if you like the joke of the week, pass it on to your family or friends or loved ones, and uh, they're going to like it, too. And uh, this is a good one. A young man is married five years, and he's as happy as can be. He and his wife love each other. They have a, a house uh, with a picket fence, just just like the storybooks, and they even have a kid already. And uh, wouldn't you know it, though, he cheats on her. And he's very torn up about it. He, he he didn't want to do that. He didn't know it was going to happen. He didn't plan for it. But he cheated on her. And uh, he, well, he gets down on his knees one day and he and he says a prayer. And he says, dear God, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I, 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 don't, I don't want it to happen again. And uh, please, please, God, if, if you don't mind, 
would you please see to it that my wife doesn't find out about this? It would, it would kill her and it should make her really sad. And, uh, and God just speaks right to him and says, I know what you mean. And I've already done it there. Poof. And she will never find out. And, uh, it's good that you called up to me, but I'll be honest with you. I'm going to take a punishment from you on this. I'm going to take a, a price from you and it's a high price. Yes, your wife is safe. She's never going to find out about this. But when you die, you're going to die by drowning. And you're going to drown, and that's it. And uh, I'm going to make that happen. And it's going to be not soon, but it'll happen. And, uh, well, the, the guy says, you know what? If you say that's a, that's the right price, that's okay with me. And yes, and uh, thank you, God. Well, folks... Years later, decades later, sure enough, life goes by and the guy is happy and has a great life. He and his wife have another couple of kids. They get another bigger house. He wins the lottery. He wins a state lottery and with millions of dollars in it. And he's, well, as happy as could be. And one day his wife, you know, his wife says to him, you know, what? don't take a, take a nice trip. You know, you relax for yourself, you know. And they're all, oh, oh, they're in their 60s now. And uh, he does. He goes just alone on a cruise ship. And he's going to cruise to Europe and then just come right back. He likes the ship. He doesn't have to see Europe. And uh, so he gets on the ship. Sure enough, folks, don't you know that there are storm warnings now on the ship that come through and everyone finds out and the captain tells everyone and they're bad warnings. This is really, really bad. There are squalls, storms, oh, there are you know, hurricanes coming and this is bad news for everyone on the ship and for the ship itself. And suddenly it hits the guy. He remembers for the first time that, wait a minute, God says I'm going to drown. And if that's not enough, the ship starts sinking. It's going down, and the guy runs to his cabin and gets on his knees again and says, a prayer again, please, God, don't take me like this. I know I said I made a deal, yes, but please, don't don't dr drown me like this. And what about all, all the other people on the ship? You, you don't want to drown them too, do you, just because I, I, I made a deal? And God says, are you kidding? Do you know how long it took me to gather up all you SOBs? <laughs> That's pretty good. And I guess, well, God does work in mysterious ways. <laughs> I hope you like that, Colonel Jeff and I did. And please pass it along if you did. And that brings me to my second favorite part of the show. The Poetry Corner. beautiful music also in that nice string quartet and even that guy coughing doesn't bother me today because this is a wonderful poem called a birthday by christina georgina rossetti and i've read from her before she was an english poet and as colonel jeff said you can tell by the name and uh, she lived from 1830 to 1894 in england and she wrote romantic devotional, and children's poems. She was one of the most popular female poets of her time. And I think you're going to like this, and it relates to something that's going to come up later. Here it is by Christina Georgina Rossetti. A Birthday. My heart is like a singing bird whose nest is in a watered chute. My heart is like an apple tree whose boughs are bent with thick-set fruit. My heart is like a rainbow shell that paddles in a halcyon sea. My heart is gladder than all these because my love is come to me. Raise me a dais of silk and down, Hang it with vair and purple dyes. Carve it in doves and pomegranates and peacocks with a hundred eyes. 
Work it in gold and silver grapes, in leaves and silver fleur-de-lis, because the birthday of my life is come. My love is come to me. Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? Thank you, Christina. I hope you agree, folks. And uh, yes, remember, if you want, pass that along. Get it. Print it out for yourself. And we, it is our joy to read good poems every week on every show. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. M.M.M., the magic movie moment. Oh, I hope you've seen this one, folks, and I hope you love it. I love it very much. It's a great movie. The Oxbow Incident from 1943, directed by the great William Wellman. What a wonderful director he was. And starring, what a cast, Henry Fonda, Dana Andrews, Henry Morgan, Anthony Quinn, Jane Darwell. You know all these folks, even if you don't know them by name, the great Jane Darwell, and she plays, boy, she's a she's a mean one in this one. But, boy, she was touching. She was, oh, in everything she ever did. And uh, Anthony Quinn, oh, he was always great. Henry Morgan, you know, from so many things. And he was a great actor, and a great actor in this. Henry Morgan was in so many great films and in TV. By the way, he was he played, uh, well, Jack Webb's uh, partner in Dragnet. Well, a couple of fellows played that, but uh, Henry Morgan was always great in that, too. He was in MASH for a while, but boy, this movie, and the great Dana Andrews, oh, Lord, he's so good. This movie, The Oxbow Incident, is something that can really touch you and grab you, and and you'll be thinking and feeling for the rest of your life, and you'll never forget it. And by the way, uh, and a little, a little fact here that... Uh, this movie, The Oxbow Incident, was nominated for Academy Award in that year uh, for Best Picture. And it uh, didn't win, but it's the only case of an American movie nominated for Best Picture and nothing else. It doesn't, as uh, Colonel Jeff was surprised to hear, too, that there was no Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting, Best Music, but there was none of that, but... It uh, was nominated for the Best Motion Picture, and uh, that they probably called it at that point anyway. Folks, the Oxbow Incident is great, and there's a magic movie moment in it that so many in this movie anyway, that makes me, well, touched and moved every time I think of it. It's near the end where Henry Fonda finds a letter written by a fella who was prisoner of the town there by, well, a lynch mob. And uh, this fella, played by the great Dana Andrews, wrote a letter to his wife. He was innocent anyway. And he writes this to his wife. And so at the bar afterwards, when they find out who was wrong and who was right, and when they found found out exactly who did what and didn't do it. Henry Fonda, they're all at the bar and it's silent in there, and Henry Fonda takes out Dana Andrews' letter to his wife and reads it out loud. He feels moved to do that, and it's good that he does. There's much that happens before that in the movie and much that happens after it. But you know what, folks? Reading that letter to Dana Andrews' wife is a magic movie moment. And I hope you agree. See this movie. It's great. The Oxbow Incident from 1943, directed by William Wellman, starring Henry Fonda, Dana Andrews, Henry Morgan, Anthony Quinn, Jane Darwell, and so many others you're going to recognize. See it. If you haven't seen it, see it for the first time. If you've seen it 50 times, like me, see it 51 times. And uh, 
There's a reason, by the way, that these things mean everything to, well, to all of us on the show here. And by the way, that's why I read the poem called A Birthday just before that Colonel Jeff found. Today is my wife's birthday, Eileen's. And, uh, well, I haven't gotten her anything yet. That's the truth of it. That's the simple truth. I haven't gotten her anything anything yet it's it's the classic stupid husband thing to do a uh, knuckle-headed man thing to do that you always wait to the day of something and you always i've done this before and i've mentioned it to you before i always go to ralph's the supermarket back on the mainland and well i'll get run over there in the morning on whatever the holiday is that i've forgotten and they have a flower store there with a one or two young women who make you bouquets and they have a few sitting out there. And it's always the same because it's the man. You're not the only man. You know, in front of you, there are nine other men. Behind you, there are 12 others. And it's the, I always call it the stupid husband's line because they're doing, and one guy said to me, well, what, what do you mean by that? I said, what do I mean by it? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? We are the stupid husbands and we're on a line here. Couldn't figure this out that we had to get her something two weeks ago? Couldn't figure that out. And I've always gotten, when it comes up, oh, I got a smile in return. And you know what? You're right. And I'm not looking to be right, but there you are. That's the way it is. And in this case, I, 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 have, I haven't gotten her anything yet. And, uh, well, and we're on Milleronia. We have, well, we have great stores. And, uh, I know she, she likes, but, you know, doesn't love certain things. I could, Take a couple of prisoners out and you know, toss them in the volcano, you know, whether that's, uh, but that happens all the time. And she knows that she's not going to love that. She's not going to say, well, oh, thanks. Happy birthday to me. Just because you tossed one down number two. And you, so I don't want to do it that way also. And well, two weeks ago on, on Valentine's Day, I, I got her two nice bracelets, but you know, I went over to, uh, on the mainland there, I went over to a mall where there's a Bloomingdale's and a Macy's, and they they do a good job, but the the, the truth is she, I don't know how to buy jewelry, and I know I, I could buy it, and she you put a smile on, and I wrote a nice card to her and for Valentine's Day, but, you know, she I know she wasn't crazy about them and the, these two bracelets, and I want to get her things she, you know what, and I know it's going to come down to an hour and a half at the end of the day today that I'm going to have to figure out to, how to get to something. And we're recording here now in our studio on Milleronia. And I, in fact, I wish I could ask you guys for help because I know I'd get it. I wish I could, but that I could get your advice. There'd be thousands of you writing in, oh, get her this, get her that. You know, go to this store, go to that store. And we could, we could do well with it here on Milleronia. But, well, you know what? I know that I can't do that. I can't even ask you because today's show won't even air till midnight. And uh, I thought I'd ask Colonel Jeff. You know, he have he and I have the same taste in just about everything, but getting a nice gift for your wife may not be one of them. I, I, I don't know. And, well, you know, it, it turns out that I I did ask him, and I came up with a great idea that, you know, get her something she already likes that she already loves and uh you know that uh, something for a spa or a hair thing that uh or a nail thing and uh get them all of those get get her something where you get her like five or ten of of each of those and uh by the way it's not colonel jeff's idea because he said and he and i both said well he said that you know you don't want to say it's my idea because then, you know, it'll be felt like my idea that she's going to find out that I I thought of it. And I said, you know what? And you're right. So, you know, just putting it out there to you, this is my idea. And uh, all right, it was Colonel Jeff, you know, but the point is that it's a great idea. And I'm passing that along to you. Get your wife or your girlfriend something that, well... She already loves, and sure, she already loves you, but 
she should love you more from a nice gift. So I'll get it. Yeah, it may only be an hour and a half to the end of the day, but I know the section of Milleronia here where we have good shops like that, and they'll have just what I want, or they know which volcano they'll be thrown in. But you know what? That's what I'm going to do, and I'll I'll let you know. Because uh, there's no better feeling than that. Our son, the Marine, uh, opened his uh, big gift that we sent him for his birthday, which is a big box of things. And uh, my wife, boy, got him some stuff he loved, and and uh, so did I. And we both wrote letters to him. And uh, he called last night from where he is. Never mind where, I can't tell you. But, I mean, he, he called, and he was so... He thought it was great. He was so moved by it. Folks, it was, you know what? It was such a great call. It made me so happy. I almost cried just standing there. And uh, I found out, see, we went to another birthday. I was invited. My wife couldn't go because it was just a few days before her birthday. And she went, well, on on the mainland, she went to Las Vegas with a couple of her dear friends, with Susie and Amber. And, uh, and they had a great weekend. So I went to, Our friends, the Dugans, they throw the best parties, and they were throwing one for their friend, Billy, who just moved to Los Angeles from Boston. And they, um, I'm telling you this because they throw the best parties. They're they're well-to-do people, and there must have been 15, 20 people there, all good friends of theirs, and uh, that... Uh, the well, Dennis said to me that he wanted me to, yeah, make something up, you know, just so that every, everyone knows it anyway, that it's going to be a, a, a joke birthday, that Billy is such a sweet guy, and he is. And you tell him something he did, and uh, I, I did. I, I made something up pretty good, but uh, the, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because one of Dennis's nieces was there, Tara, And she's just been promoted in her job in Claremont in California and uh, to be the head of the whole, well, finance program. I can't remember these things anyway because I never remember them in my life. You know, what? whoa, what a great day for her. But she is. She's wonderful. And uh, Dennis sent her over to me to, uh, to chat before we did all the other stuff for Billy's birthday. It turns out her son is a Marine, too. Her son, uh, Zachary, just graduated from the MCRD, which is the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. That's the West Coast Marine Training Center. There's one on the East Coast, East Coast Paris Island. You've probably heard of both of these. But, well, he's already starting his next gunnery training, and uh, it really meant something to both of us, to be able to share that. Every time she talked about visiting him in Camp Pendleton and how she feels very impressed, but really not like part of it because they have, well, their own their own world there and their own society there. And I kept smiling and saying, I know, I know, because I do. And she knows now too. And we felt very close and uh, and that meant a lot, too. And I told her some of my kids' marine stories. Oh, there are a lot of them, but uh, there's... Uh, <laughs> I visited them a bunch of times at uh, Camp Pendleton, too, and uh, if my wife was off or working somewhere, and that's a couple hours down there, but you know what? It's a great ride, and walking down... Well, onto the base there. It is very meaningful, very moving. It's Marines and Marine World. They're great guys. But <laughs> my kid took me. I went to his barracks, and then he said uh, I was going to head home. I was working that night. It was a weekend night. It was, I think, a Saturday. And uh, he took me to, I really wanted to go to the uh, to the restroom, the men's room. And he said, there's one in their pizza headquarters. And it's a headquarters, and it's pizza. They have, folks, pizzas. It's very big. It holds tables of, and there are 
couple of hundred Marines at every section, and it's a big dome, and they've got 15, 16 giant TV screens all over up there. And folks, every one of those screens has a different college football game on it. And they get a pizza. They they have a couple of other things for sale there. But that's not what they want. It's not what you would want. It's not what I would want. What do you want, another hot dog? But I think that's it. And these guys, there are uh, there are four tops, meaning that every table has four seats. And they all get an extra large cheese pizza. And I mean, that's it. And these are extra large. And it comes in a box. So they each open, four Marines at each table, each open the pizza box and sit there and hit that pizza. And I mean hit it and then look up and pick a game and watch a game. And I remember telling you know, someone at work that uh, they do this. And I, uh, so I went to the bathroom there and that went fine. And I mean, I, looking back at these guys and I could, I, it was just great. I, I and someone at work said to me, "Well, that doesn't sound so, so great." I said, "Well, then you must be out of your mind because it sounds great to me." <laughs> I mean, a gigantic pizza, well made, a good brand. I can't remember what it was, but and everyone eating it with you and you with them, and you're just you know glancing up and watching the game. And I don't mean like a front row of a movie theater. You don't have to look up that high. I mean, this stuff was. Because of the dome, it was, well, you're just looking up at about a 15-degree angle, I suppose. Gee, it sounded great to me. And then my kid said to me, Jim, I'm going to have uh, some of this now, too. I'm sorry you can't join me in it. And I said, you're sorry. Boy, I'd love to be here. But I had, as I said, I had to work and had to uh, head back to Stately Miller Manor, where there was already a couple or three hours back there. And then I was going to work that night, so... Folks, you know what? That meant a lot. And uh, when we when he graduated, in fact, from MCRD, he was taken. We, my wife and I, and went down there with uh, his younger brother, and we loved it. It was very moving. And then the four of us went to the Marine Museum, and I'm telling you this because it's a great museum. It's not well. It's not so fancy again, but they have everything you'd want to see. And it's all real. And it's all close. And his two DIs, that's the drill instructors, came by and they're in uniform and he had just graduated. And and uh, they were really, well, they were impressed. They were taken with, they didn't know my wife and I were in show business because my, our kid never told them and they asked him, you know, after graduation, they kind of went up and just, Gave him that D.I., the drill instructor, talking at you from an inch away and just said, you know, why would you never say anything about this, uh, about your show business, your dad, and in movies and this and that, and your mom does writes and directs? And and he said, well, I didn't want to be known as, say, uh, Hollywood Miller or get a nickname like that. And they looked at him for a second and said, you know what? Smart. That probably would have happened for the rest of your life. And uh, so they were standing there, and they wanted to ask some questions about old oh, movies and TV, and we were all just, you know, laughing. And and as soon as they came over, our kid, our son, the Marine, I could see he was standing right next to me. He straightened up at attention, and his fingers curled in just the right place by his side, and his posture was perfect, but it was... It was really impressive too. He did that as the as his DIs were talking with us, and uh, they they enjoyed the whole thing. And we talked for about four, five or ten minutes, and then they uh, they had to go. They said uh, goodbye to everybody, and uh, they well walked off. I wanted to say marched off, but they just walked off. And then I could see our kid just you know relaxed, went to uh, at ease, and. Uh, I looked at him and so did my wife and he was he was looking very confused he was looking very puzzled by something and my wife said to him I'm sorry did it was it a little weird to you that 
Daddy and I were just talking to your sergeants there uh, so casually, and uh, and he said, he immediately said, uh, oh, no, that's no, that's fine. It's just that I'd never seen them smile before. <laughs> and we got a big kick out of that because, well, of course he hadn't. They're marine drill instructors. They've got families. They've already been in everything and every war. And now they, they're making new Marines, and uh, they make them well. But I got a kick out of that. I wanted to say, how do you like that? Never seen them smile before. No, I guess you hadn't, because that's not what they're training you for. They're not training you to laugh. When they take those Marine pictures where they're in the full dressed blues with the American flag and the Marine flag behind them, and they always, you know, look, well, very serious and very, really uh, strong. It takes them a while. Our kid was telling me it takes all of them a while to not laugh, to not smile for the picture. And the pho- photographer is always just kind of shaking his head. No, stop. Don't smile. They don't just just bark a couple of times and just ah, and shake your head, you know. And then they do that. That's how they get. That look, well, I know that now, and so do you folks. And you know what? That's what makes us in the same core, you and me and Colonel Jeff. We know the same things. Homer is Homer and Pluto is a planet. So remember, folks, as always, If you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to and someone there who cares about you, folks, the game's over and you've won. So remember, no matter how much good pizza you have a chance to eat on a Marine base, we love you. We'll see you here next time.